Hello, everybody. Daniel Rothamel here again. Uh, thanks for joining me in what will be sort of an introduction to the series I'm going to do about Snowflake, all about Snowflake. So um, I had mentioned on LinkedIn that uh, one of the things I'm going to do in preparation for my Snow Pro exam is sort of walk you through this excellent book. There it is. The Definitive Snowflake Guide uh, by Joyce Avila. Um, but before I walk through the exercises in that book, I wanted to do sort of a, an introduction to Snowflake, to sort of a, what the heck is Snowflake? Why should you care? What makes Snowflake unique? Um, and then sort of lay out how I'm going to do subsequent videos. All right. So let me get uh, right into this. So um, here's Snowflake's website. Um, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar at all, if you've never heard of Snowflake, um, Snowflake is a cloud data platform. So what the heck does that mean? So one of the things I wanted to do here is sort of take you through a little bit of the introduction and um, Snowflake's documentation because Snowflake's documentation is really good and it will allow you to understand some of the key concepts that you want to understand about Snowflake. And I'll explain why some of them um, really make Snowflake different from other potential data platforms. So here we are in Snowflake's documentation. Um, you've got an introduction to Snowflake here, um, and then it breaks down all the different sections, which is just over here. But um, as I said, Snowflake is, uh, is a, it's, a, it's a platform as a service, really. Um, it's a SaaS product, but it's also a PaaS product. Um, so what Snowflake is giving you is a data platform as a service. Oh, see, data platform is a cloud service. Um, and so, you know, that means there's no hardware. There's really no software unless you want to install their um, command line client. Um, then that would be the only software you'd ever have to install. There's no ongoing maintenance, management, upgrades, tuning. All that stuff is handled by Snowflake. Um, so it is a data platform as a service. One of the things that makes maybe the first thing, the core thing, that makes Snowflake different from other data platforms is that Snowflake was built on the cloud, for the cloud, from the ground up. So from the very beginning when Snowflake was started, it was built on the cloud, for the cloud, to take advantage and to leverage the um, architectural um, advantages, um, the cost advantages of being on the cloud, on the public clouds. So Snowflake was set up that way from the beginning. Um, Snowflake can be deployed on any of the three major um, cloud providers, those being AWS and Azure and GCP. So you can have, and we'll talk about this, Just I'll talk about this a little bit more. We'll go into a little bit more detail on that, but um, Snowflake can be on any cloud. So in taking advantage of the cloud, um, the architecture that's an infrastructure, of the cloud and the advantages of the cloud, um, that's really what makes Snowflake different. So it's important to understand Snowflake's architecture because it's different than other data platforms you probably are already familiar with. And so you can see their first statement here, their architecture is a hybrid of the traditional shared disk and shared nothing database architectures. So if you're not familiar with those architectures, in a shared disk architecture, um, you, have a, you have compute resources all sharing the same disk. So they're all sharing the same storage. Um, and so the potential drawback there is resource contention, right? You've got a lot of people trying to do the same thing on the, on one central database that they're all sharing. And so it creates contention issues and, you know, concurrency issues and performance suffers. So there's ways to deal with that, but Snowflake, you don't have to because it's a hybrid of the traditional shared disk and the shared nothing is when you have um, one compute resource or, one resource tied to one disk. So you have different databases for different, um, different uh, applications for different uses and they share nothing, right? So a compute resource is not, a database is not being shared by multiple compute resources and one compute resource can't go to multiple databases. It's shared nothing. Um, Snowflake is set up differently and it's set up differently 
because of the cloud, right? One of the things that the cloud can do, and you all probably know this already, is, you know, give you compute as you need it, right? It's consumption based. So you only have to pay for compute when you need that compute. Well, Snowflake um, takes advantage of that, which we'll see here in a little bit. Um, and so that means that Snowflake can separate a lot of the traditional functions um, that are needed for a data warehouse to run successfully, right? To run well. So this, this diagram here is something that if you want to learn about Snowflake, you should really try and commit to memory. Um, it shows you what Snowflake's architecture looks like. So here we have a VPC on a public cloud. So that could be, again, it could be AWS, could be Azure, could be Google. And Snowflake's architecture is divided into three separate layers. You have the database storage layer, which is, as you might guess, where the data is stored, right? Traditional database storage layer. You have the query processing layer, which is um, which you interact with by warehouses, what Snowflake calls warehouses, virtual warehouses. This is your compute power. Um, and in subsequent videos, we'll go into the details about how to create and utilize and manage virtual warehouses. And then this layer here, the cloud services layer, is the thing that really makes Snowflake super unique and where you get a lot of power um, from Snowflake. So this cloud services layer is a layer that exists in the cloud that you don't have to worry about. Like you're not managing it. And in this layer is where your authentication and access control is handled. It's where the infrastructure is managed. Um, it's where your queries are optimized automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Um, it's where the metadata for your uh, database layer, um, for all your tables, for all your data, that's where the metadata is managed. And again, we'll go into this in much greater detail in further videos. Um, and it's where your security is managed. So all these things are managed in the cloud services layer for you. Um, you have control over them, but uh, everything is, it, a lot of the, the sort of engine of, of um, Snowflake, it really exists in this cloud services layer. So it's important, it's really important that you understand that this, the, these three layers is what makes up the architecture of Snowflake because when you understand this, it helps you understand the advantages of Snowflake over you know, traditional data warehouse platforms. And it also helps you think about ways that you can leverage these advantages, right? So that's the, um, the, the sort of 30,000 foot view of um, Snowflake's architecture. Um, and then, you know, you can go into more detail here um, in the documentation about each layer, the database storage layer, the query processing layer, and the cloud services layer. Um, you know, we'll talk in, a, in the next video about uh, connecting to Snowflake. That'll be sort of the, the uh, video number one, like the chapter one video. Um, we'll see how to start up a trial Snowflake account, how you can connect to it, um, you know, that type of thing. For right now, it's just good to know that, uh, you know, there's a web-based user interface for um, Snowflake, which is called SnowSite. And that's the way most people, most of you will probably interact most of the time with Snowflake. Um, you can use their command line client, SnowSQL. Um, and then there's ODBC and J JDBC drivers. Um, there's native connectors. There's third-party connectors um, that can connect to Snowflake also. Um, but going into a little bit more of the, uh, the cloud platforms, and like I said, you know, Snowflake is available on all three major cloud platforms. That's here. Um, obviously, they tell you Amazon, Google, and Azure. Um, you know, there's depending on what um, uh, what edition of Snowflake you're using. There's a lot of options, but we'll go again. We'll go over all of these later in subsequent videos. You don't need to worry about it right now. You can check out the documentation if you want. Um, pricing is obviously control uh, is varies by cloud provider and even potentially um, region. Um, and you can see here they have a list of all the regions around the world on the various cloud providers in which you can deploy your Snowflake. Um, you know, so you can take a look at that map. Um, again, I'm not going to go into detail here. This gets covered later, but just so you're aware. Um, 
and then the, the different editions of Snowflake. Um, there's basically four editions of Snowflake. You have your standard edition, you have your enterprise edition, the business critical edition, and the virtual private Snowflake. Um, again, I hate to keep saying this, but we'll go over this in more detail in later videos. And some of these differences will come up um, in some of the exercises you know, that I'll take you through. Uh, but it's just good to know those are the four editions. Uh, one thing to understand about pricing for Snowflake is that it is consumption-based. Um, you are paying for your storage. You're paying very little, quite frankly, um, for your storage, but then you're paying for your consumption of compute. And again, we'll go over that in more detail later, um, but that's just what you should know about how Snowflake is priced. It is, it is a consumption-based um, pricing. If you want to see the details, you can go right here to the pricing page, um, and that will take you to all the details um, and you can actually break it down. You can put in, you know, numbers and that type of thing. If you want to check that out, um, let's go back here. Maybe. Oh, it's being slow. My internet's being slow. Um, so yeah. So those are your different additions of, of Snowflake. Now it's important to realize that most of the features the key features of Snowflake are available in most of the editions. Um, there are some things like standard comes with a ton of features is my point. Um, now there are obviously things that you're going to want, you know, I think for business users like enterprise is going to be your probably lowest tier that you're going to want to go to uh, because there are a couple features that aren't in standard that are in enterprise that are like fairly critical. I would say if you, if you, if you have a business of any size, if you have a data, um, warehouse of any size. Um, but standard enterprise where a lot of people are going to fit, um, the difference, the differences that you get to business critical and virtual private snowflake, uh, revolve a lot around security, um, depending on what your security compliance requirements are. Um, now this is another section I just want to take you through real quick, the overview of sort of the key features of snowflake. So this, you know, going over again, what makes, you know, snowflake different? Um, so security governance and data protection. Um, you know, you've got MFA. You can enable MFA on all your accounts for all your users. You can uh, enable SSO or you can use OAuth. Um, you have all of the security that comes with being on um, the various public cloud platforms. There's support for PHI data. All data is automatically encrypted in Snowflake. So you don't have to think about um, encryption. On that note, all data is also automatically compressed in Snowflake, so you don't have to worry a lot about um, compression. Um, you've got object level access control. This is something we'll be spending more time on later also, but you know there are different objects in Snowflake. Um, almost everything is an object in Snowflake, and you can control access to any of those objects in various different ways. Um, Snowflake time travel, is a really cool feature. So that's one day uh, for all accounts and it's up to 90 days, um, you know, with enterprise and above. And that time travel allows you to, mm, let's say, for example, you accidentally drop a table. Well, you can go back and undrop that table. Like that's pretty cool. If you've ever accidentally dropped a table and couldn't get back to it, you know, even on a standard account, you've got one day of time travel. So you come back the next day and you're like, oh crap, I accidentally dropped that. I need it back. You can undrop it. And then again, enterprise and above, you've got up to um, 90 days. There's, there's even fail safe, which is seven days for, and we'll go into this later also, but which is a seven day standard for all accounts, which means that you essentially have disaster recovery of historical data. So let's say that, you know, you lose your data or you do something and lose your data and it's beyond that time travel period, you can contact Snowflake. And if you're within seven days, of your time travel, Snowflake can restore that data for you. Um, you've got column level security, row access policies, object tagging. Again, we'll go into all these things later. Um, uh, this section here is about SQL. So SQL is the base language for everything that gets done in Snowflake. Um, everything that gets done in Snowflake is can be done through SQL commands. So if you know SQL, you're way down the road to understanding and being able to utilize Snowflake. Um, there's also support for certain things in other languages, but SQL is the foundation of everything that gets done in Snowflake. Um, you've got your different connectivity tools here, um, data import and export. 
data sharing is the other thing that is really unique to Snowflake, right? There's an entire data marketplace that you can share data securely with other users, either for free or you can make use of data and share it for a fee. If you have data that, um, you know, people might want to pay for, you can securely share that data in the data marketplace. Um, and you can secure when you, if you're the type, if you have a type of business that, uh, frequently needs to share data with customers or users, um, you probably already know that can be a kludgy process. It can be difficult. It can be hard to secure. Um, Snowflake has you covered right from the beginning. Snowflake is designed again because of its cloud native architecture to make use of the ability to share data simply and securely. You also have database replication um, and failover. So those are sort of, you know, going through the, the key features of um, Snowflake. They have this cool um, little diagram here about the life cycle of data and all the things that, you know, Snowflake does, obviously. So you can, this is how you, you know, organize your data. And we'll go into this more later. Um, databases, schemas, and tables. Um, you can then store that data. You can take it from someplace um, and bring it into Snowflake. You can query that data. You can work with the data to create tables, schemas, views, all those things. And then you can export the data out. You can remove data from um, Snowflake also. But again, we'll go through all this in, in later videos. This is just to let you know that it, it's there. Um, and then it goes into a little bit more detail on how you can work with the data, store the data, move the data, that type of thing. So those are, and then if you want to know uh, continuous data protection, that's referring to, um, there are different ways you can regulate access and secure your data. You can create network policies. Um, so you can whitelist certain IP addresses. Um, you can blacklist uh, IP addresses. Um, you have, I was already talked about MFA and SSO. There is access control in Snowflake. All, all ingested data stored in Snowflake tables is encrypted using AES-256 strong encryption. So like I said, everything's encrypted. Um, you don't have to think about it. Um, and then, you, as we already talked about a little bit, time, time travel and fail safe. So there's a lot of um, data protection that is continuous and managed for you. A lot of it is managed for you in Snowflake. So that's, again, one of those, those differences. And then this uh, talks about their, the different um, regulations um, that Snowflake is compliant with. So uh, you can check those out, too. Um, so, like I said, this is just sort of that, you know, 30,000 foot view, that intro to Snowflake, um, as we get in, because when I start really working through, uh, the book, um, you know, you'll at least have some sort of introduction to Snowflake. If you've never heard of Snowflake or you've never, or you've heard of it and wanted to know more, um, I hope this was, you know, a little bit informative for you and, and at least piques your interest enough to check out the documentation, um, read through stuff because honestly, I believe that's really the best way uh, to sometimes learn about a new tool or platform or service is to actually get into the documentation where you can get some of the nitty gritty stuff. So I just want to take you through that real quick. And then uh, in subsequent videos, I'll start working through the book. Um, in chapter one, we will go over um, how you can start up a Snowflake trial account and then sort of navigating around Snowslide a little bit. I'll show you how that works. Um, we'll run some commands um, so that you get you know comfortable uh, with SnowSight and the SQL commands to make things work um, and all that. And you can see how the objects work and all those things. So join me for the subsequent videos. I hope you found this one interesting and valuable. If you got any questions, throw them in the chat, put them on wherever you're watching this, put a comment out, whatever. Um, I love to talk about Snowflake. So you know, if you like to talk about Snowflake, tell your friends. Um, tell them to watch the videos and uh, we can have awesome snowflake discussions together because the data cloud is the future. So uh, get on the train because uh, it's, it's going to start moving fast. All right. So until the next video, I hope you all have uh, an awesome time and uh, everybody take it easy.